Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Crestron webinar. Today's topic is Big Time UC Performance Gets Small. My name is Kara Walkovich, and I'm here with a great group of presenters as well as attendees. But before we let the presenters get started, I just want to go over a few webinar troubleshooting points. First off, all attendees are muted and in listen only mode. Second, if you have any questions, please ask them in the questions section on the GoToWebinar panel. Third, this webinar is being recorded for future use and distribution, and a follow-up email will be sent a few days after the webinar with the recording, questions and answers in an Excel, as well as some additional reference material. Lastly, we are broadcasting in webcast mode, which means the webinar is broadcasting through either your browser or mobile app. If you are experiencing any audio or visual issues, please change browsers. Chrome's probably best. Adjust your audio accordingly, or you may need to reboot. So that's all I have as far as webinar troubleshooting points. I'll now pass this over to our first presenter, Andrew Gross. Andrew, you want to take it away? Fantastic. Thank you, Carl. And welcome, everyone, to this incredibly exciting product release event that we have here. We've got some incredible people joining myself today. Uh, I'm Andrew Gross, as Carl mentioned. I am our director of sales for UC Enterprise. But we also have Nick Milani, our executive director of commercial product marketing, and Joe Sarrison from Crestron, who's our director of product strategy. Uh, on the side, we have our partners and our customers who are also really thankful for joining us. We have Craig Durr, a senior analyst over at Wayne House Research, and we have Thomas Gibblein, the digital enablement architect from Rich Products, which has been a great partner with us deploying Crestron Flex and now testing this new Mercury Mini. Now, these folks will be focused on explaining and, of course, showcasing all of this brand new technology and, of course, the iteration of an already best-in-class, best-in-industry tabletop conferencing solution. But to best understand what makes this launch and this product truly so important, we must first remember really where we came from. And three years ago, Crestron changed the way that people collaborate in meeting spaces. And we introduced the Mercury that I think all of you on this call may be familiar with. The Mercury was the first AV meets UC product of, of its kind. And what we did was we took $10,000 of conferencing equipment and smashed it into a $2,000 single tabletop conferencing system. Since then, we've shipped nearly 50,000 of these units to customers around the globe to incredible reviews. It revolutionized the meeting space, allowing for open conferencing for all meeting platforms. But since then, of course, demands and technology have changed in the conference space, so enter Microsoft Teams. This is the native revolution. It removed the need for laptop dependence to really run a video conference. And Crestron, of course, jumped on board with Flex. We leveraged the already successful and incredibly powerful audio solution of Mercury, but now made it native Teams and native Zoom rooms. Since release just 12 months ago, we've shipped tens of thousands of these native solutions all around the globe to campuses and enterprises everywhere, utilizing it in all different iterations. Now, of course, what we did, as is true to Crestron, we had to update the, update the device again. Enter MX, the first and only BYOD plus native solution on the market today. It was the ultimate in flexibility and usability for the office. Just released in May, we have already shipped thousands of these units, again, around the globe due to its pure functionality and flexibility prowess. All three of these product releases have leveraged the wildly successful Mercury form factor, the greatest in all-in-one conferencing solution. Since the release itself, back in 2018, we have received 34 industry awards, most in the market for any tabletop conferencing solution. But of course, we've also received incredible and amazing customer responses from the, the university campus up to, of course, the Enterprise Conference Room with partners such as USC and Corning, and even one again, of course, with Rich Products joining here today. So from the Enterprise to the Campus Classroom, Mercury has always allowed us to meet naturally and meet effectively. Everyone is heard, everyone is seen, and we're collaborating really as we should, effortlessly and naturally around the device. But now with almost 100,000 of these systems around the globe, we took feedback, we learned a lot how people meet and the needs for your conferences, and of course your enterprises, your schools, your hospitals, your governments. And so as is with Crestron, we react and we respond. And so we wanna take the amazing benefits, the incredible audio capabilities of this tabletop conferencing solution, audio where it should be, closest to the participants, 
keeping the all-in-one device and cleaning up the room? Well, let's give it a facelift. Let's truly maximize collaboration by minimizing it. Exciting times here at Crestron with the introduction of the new MM30, the Mercury Mini, as it's commonly uh, known. Now, this is a great device, a world-class device with unbelievable microphone pickup, great sound, paired with the Hudley camera. It's ideal for small spaces of all types, whether that's at home, at work, in education spaces. It's truly designed to fill in all the places people need to meet in this new world of work, which we're in. Speaking of which, I wanted to invite in our customer, uh, Thomas DeBlein from Rich Products. Thomas, how are you, sir? Doing well, how are you guys today? Good, let me crank up your volume a little bit here so everybody can hear you. Sure. Uh, thanks sure. so much for joining us. I see you've got a, a, an MM30 right there in front of you. That's correct. And yeah, do uh, just recently installed the new MTR. Um, love the design, love the style. Uh, we're actually uh, a company that's had a few of these devices in place, the uh, actual regular size Mercury for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as was mentioned earlier, uh, you know, we got some, some great feedback and we got some specific design feedback. And it, it seems that you guys were in direct alignment with what we were looking for. So this has been great. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed, Thomas. And, you know, doing a little bit of research on Rich Products. Here's a, a huge company. All of us have experienced through Cool Whip and non-dairy creamers, I came to discover. Uh, tell us a little That's more great. about your yeah. business. Tell us about your reach. Because I always think it's unique to get these large multinational companies. It really does put a strain on yeah. video conferencing, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, so, you know, based as a, a, a food company at its core manufacturing, um, we're kind of a B2B, but we do have some B2C business. Um, you know, things like uh, FarmRich and CPAC, Carvel, um, for real, a couple of uh, businesses that are consumer facing that we have. But uh, 4 billion annual sales, uh, multinational business with over 11,000 associates. Uh, over 4,000 product codes in, in our in our uh, overall envelope, and so um, you know, as as you can see there, you know, we're in a lot of different areas, even including barbecue, which is is an interesting one. It uh, it was initially um, built on uh, Bob Rich Sr. Uh, as as our founder uh, coming in that uh, was able to make the first non-dairy uh, whip topping, mm. and from there, you know, it just exploded. And um, so I've been with the company uh, for about a little over 10 years. I came out as a contractor. Really love their story, really love the uh, senior execs, the sponsorship, you know, what they were selling. And um, so I, I work on uh, our newly developed uh, ADX team, um, which is associate digital experience. And our, my core focus as a, a solutions architect is actually to uh, tie in endpoint devices. And, and this was a great fit. Um, we're, we're a very uh, strong Microsoft customer. Uh, as of, you know, almost two years ago, we, we uh, moved a lot of workloads to the cloud. Uh, and so it's been uh, uh, very successful for us. We were almost, you know, unintentionally uh, planning for COVID when, you know, when we didn't even know it was coming, right? And right. so um, we, we leverage these types of technologies to actually enable that collaboration experience. And it's been uh, very successful uh, and the feedback's been fantastic. And we're really taking that momentum to the next level in the next few years too. So it's been really good. Absolutely. And I know we've done a lot of work with you recently on a number of the different spaces you guys work in, which are a truly beautiful and very unique also. You have culinary institutes, you have live demonstrations of food. Um, talk yep. to us a little bit about your unique needs in your business. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, you know, Crestron came in, we've, we've been a Crestron customer for a very long time. Um, we, we, we've definitely, you know, rode on the coattails of uh, the Fusion system, moving in XIO, we, you know, we have room schedulers. Uh, there's a really great case study we just finished, as you mentioned, you know, to do some more reading up on that. Uh, but as you can see, our facilities, that's actually our atrium, it's a beautiful space. Uh, and so that was just finished uh, quite a few years ago. 
and uh, the commitment was to um, that that looks actually like uh, your living room. It's a it's a family owned you know business, right. a private business, and uh, the family loves to to make you come in and feel as a part of our own. And so um, what you don't see to the left and to the right of that though um, is actually a, a full state of the art uh, innovation space. And so uh, we actually have, and we just completed a large project with uh, the C160 series, uh, really being the backbones to our, to our team's environment, uh, is allow for uh, town halls uh, as well on one side, and then really getting into a, a full production studio around um, the, the presentation kitchen and, and actually a studio kitchen uh, that allows for us to, to work on, you know, product cuttings and different demos and things for uh, internal purposes and, and external for that matter. So it's been, been great. So you have you have your team then broadcasting out to your global network of, of, of dealers, of, of companies, sharing that information in real time from your headquarters. They're all riding on that flex system. Absolutely. Uh, so we, we, we prioritize on what we call the rich value. And so that, that value that we add is, is adding in, um, you know, culinary expertise uh, on top of the products that we sell. And so, you know, in, in current challenging times and, and consistent with the, you know, experience exposure that we've had, we, we were able to utilize these type, 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 type of technologies in order to actually uh, touch base with those customers and actually help them through some of their challenges that they're having, you know, uh, a back house or what have you that we can um, add some additional value to once, you know, help put them together you know, recipes and and, 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 uh, and product handling, uh, a lot of different areas that they can focus on. My, my, my background, you know, my space is really more associate facing, uh, but what's actually changing is, is how we can assist on the technology side towards actually interfacing with the customers as well. So it's really blending uh, as far as the, the opportunities that are out there right now. And, and we will continue to, to charge down that path with the, with the um, restaurant uh, platform. Yeah, so, so interestingly enough, so you've got Flex you've been using in the past, you've had some success in different applications. You know, with the MM specifically, maybe talk about the room you're in right now, how that gets used, and where do you see this device kind of filling in the gaps of your existing solution? Sure, sure. So um, today we're around uh, 30 plus devices. Uh, we're continuing to grow that. That's going to actually exponentially grow globally. Uh, regional responsibilities all lie uh, between, you know, the, the U.S. and Canada, Latin America, uh, our folks in, in Asia, as well as EMA. And so, um, you know, we, we've taken some um, really grassroots approach to this, and we became very successful and put a recommendation on and deployed it. Um, so within those spaces, we have B series, C series, M series. Uh, we're working on some R series for Canada, and you know, most recently now getting the mini in place. I'm actually sitting in uh, our executive office, which actually splits the the two C levels. And one of the challenges we knew we had to outfit was uh, it's a smaller space, right? And and you know, the, the M might have been too big, uh, a B would have been nice, but it's a it's a slight adjustment, but um, you know, when you guys, uh, you know, notify me of this product development and really something that we could test and exploit, I, I think it's a, it's a great fit. I love the form factor. Um, it, it, one of the things I mentioned is, and we got feedback on, was a, it was a smaller screen at start on the original Mercury. Now we got a nice 7-inch, so it's, it's really a nice, comfortable fit. Audio quality is great. It was easy to, to implement and build. Uh, and we've gotten great feedback actually from those executives using it uh, for Teams meetings. Any comments on installation? I mean, you know, I think one of the misperceptions we have is that tabletop devices are, are difficult to install. So maybe you can speak to your installation. Fair point, fair point. So we have a local installer. Uh, we'll have a local installer actually physically everywhere that we're at um, that, that has partnered with us, partnered with Crestron, partnered with Microsoft in order to get that to be successful. I'm a person that hates cables. That's just, you go to my house, you don't see any cables anywhere. Uh, I prefer the professional installation. Um, but, you know, for, for the experience, you know, you got the right type of furniture, the right uh, technology and the right integrators, you can really hide and virtualize the whole experience. Um, we, we typically, you know, uh, run through the walls. Um, I, I do actually enjoy the design where you can actually have all devices, the UC engine and the controller on the network. Um, we are an enterprise grade network. Uh, we're an 802.1x authenticated network. We've built a, a VLAN that configures for AV. You know, we've gone through those steps, you know, at, at large to, to make that possible. But you, the ability to remote configure, remote access, um, support this from a, from an infrastructure side of things, uh, enable the, the collaboration side for the end users. It just really has, has taken off as, as a development plan for us. Yeah. Uh, and this will just grow exponentially between um, back office, which is really where our core focus was, and then moving to plants and other areas. Wonderful, wonderful, Tom. So um, one last question for you then. As far as it goes with the, you know, your, your use of XIO Cloud, you mentioned that a little bit earlier. Is that something that you continue to use then with this device? Have you used the remote control functionality, some of the deployment capabilities? Oh, 
looks like we're having an audio problem here. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, you're just fine. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, we, we have uh, gone on the path of uh, XIO. Um, we have all of our devices actually implemented in it, uh, inclusive of the, uh, the UC platform. So um, that's been very great and successful for us. Uh, we also are uh, in, in a Microsoft customer, as I mentioned, a lot of uh, moved to the O365 cloud services. Uh, we've used Intune for deployment. Um, it, it, we've used the Crustron tool, tool, tool set for controls. Um, and, and we're also um, going down the path of, uh, you know, the Microsoft um, Teams premium uh, services um, that even add an additional layer onto that on top of what you actually get by default through the admin side. So very easy for us from an, from a, a, an IT perspective to control it. Um, but, you know, uh, it also, too, is um, I love the design concept that it's it's staying standard consistent and growing very gradually so that it's not a, a, a difficult adoption uh, for the end users when it comes to uh you know, understanding how to come in and sit down. The one click to join has added so much value and to simplify the design, it just adds even, you know, it just, it's even that much better icing on the cake. Well, Thomas, I really appreciate you taking the time. We'll join you again a little bit later for Q and A. So if folks have questions, they can feel free to ask then. Uh, but most importantly, if you want to learn more about rich products, we do have the case study on crestron.com under the news tab, a uh, recent case study with rich products. Again, thank you, Thomas. Appreciate it. Absolutely, but thank you. To do, uh, beyond the customer experience and, and Thomas's real world and his, his environment, we wanted to invite Craig Durr from Wayne House Research in to talk a little bit more about his experience with the device, uh, the unboxing, the installation, the setup, uh, and walk you through a few slides and talk about uh, just what he's seen with the device and, and his experience. Craig? Nick, how are you doing? Great, how are you? Good. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity to share some things with you. Let me go ahead and just bring up a couple of slides here and I'm going to talk through this. So um, one of the cool things I get to do in my job, I mentioned to you, is I get to preview products, right? And I was pretty excited about this box when it came in and I did a little social media thing. and I got a lot of good uh, responses and excitement about opening the box up. Um, but I want to tell you my experience about the Crestron uh, Flex MM. Now, Couple things to help set this up. I want to give you some context. I want to then talk about what I think is the right solution around that context. And then I'll hit some of the key things that I found uh, fit that solution from the MX30. So uh, let me go ahead and just share with you guys some, some information to kind of give you context about why I think this is a timely solution. Um, you know, one of the things we recently did at Wayne House is we did a in-depth analysis of the number of conference rooms that are in the world. Felt like there wasn't good information there um, and we were very surprised or I should say there's some really interesting insights we found when we took the total number of conference rooms and cross-referenced it with the video installed base of systems out in market right now there's a large number of conference rooms out there right now somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 I'm sorry 48 million conference rooms and the large percentage of these are the smaller spaces are the ones that are about 30 million of these and in this context of this particular study i define these as spaces that are 15 by 15 feet um, seat approximately four people typically it's the circular table in the center of the room and the, the rooms used for multiple things such as conversing uh, collaborating presenting just dissemination of information and there may or may not be someone on the far end of a call or it may just be in the room as well but what was really interesting though is you start looking at the percentages around the world of where video solutions are installed the install base of video in these conference rooms was actually quite small. Um, for all rooms altogether, about 6.7% of these rooms are video enabled. Um, of course, there's more video uh, in the larger rooms. Think of like the board rooms and the executive rooms. There's about 15, 16% installed video. And that speaks to the trend that took place where video started off as a C-level feature set. But as it's becoming more enabled, it's starting to move down to the smaller, more accessible rooms. But still today, there's only about 5% of those small rooms that are video enabled. So it prompted the question, why? Looking in a rear view mirror, what was some of the inhibitors or some of the things that was slowing what seemed to be a natural adoption of video in these spaces? Um, I looked at it in a framework that talked about this. The people working, where they're working, and how they're working. Workforce, workplace, workflows. And there's some key things I want to talk to you here to help talk about what a right solution would have. And then we can talk about the product. Um, you know, one of the first things that took place was, um, this is 
2019, uh, prior to our current situation, is that we had a low number of uh, information workers that were enabled to work remotely. Uh, well, what does that mean? You have to think of it this way, that video begets video. Personal video experiences beget group video experiences. The ability to work remote drives the need for people to be able to communicate asynchronous or asynchronously to people not in the same space, right? So there was a low percentage. It was somewhere in the neighborhood of like 16% of, of the workforce. 32% were enabled to do it. Only about 16% of the U.S. workforce are actually doing it as some kind of telecommuting service now. The other challenge was taking place in, was there was a misalignment of price and performance. So as you get to smaller rooms, uh, people wanted to have what they thought was an appropriate solution at a right price point, right? The feature set, the functionality at a price point to meet the needs of the room. And the market was moving towards that, um, but it was at a pace that was uh, slow until the recent advent of the PC-based systems. We refer to them as reference design systems. These are systems that enable uh, uh, cloud-based solutions like Microsoft Teams or Zoom to work in a group environment. Um, there was also something else taking place, which was a lag in the workspace transformation taking place. Uh, everyone was still using private spaces and we started moving towards open offices and what have you, and then activity-based uh, learning environments as well to working environments too. That transition was taking place, but was slow. Um, now on the workflow side, it kind of speaks to how we were working as individuals. Uh, as individuals, we weren't really adopting video as a form of communication. There's a lot of cultural and business processes that were inhibiting this. Again, looking in the rearview mirror. Um, and one of the key things was the end user experience. People did not see alignment with how they were working on a day-to-day -day basis with whatever UC platform they were using, whether it be something like Teams or Zoom, to um, even just the ability to, to walk into a room and feel comfortable about that. Um, these were some of the key challenges that took place. Um, oops, I'm sorry, I was talking and I was not building out my images on the slides. Sorry about that. Um, but, uh, you know, come six months ago, uh, you, you guys released a press release and said the world has changed as of six months ago, and that's true. And that's how the pandemic has changed in the situation. Here's some of the key things that I think have changed some of those inhibitors and why we're seeing some higher adoption and higher interest in what's taking place in the, in the group video. Well, one of the things that every news organization is talking about is that everyone's working remotely. Uh, probably it's a good estimate about 64% of uh, the U.S. market is working remotely currently in this pandemic uh, phase. Um, one of the other things that takes place is uh, because of that, people have had to use tools to stay in touch, right? And in terms of users, there's been about a 20% increase in just number of users in these collaboration uh, applications. But more importantly, on top of that, the increase of use, this is where people talked about daily users and what have you, is gone 80%, it's through the sky. It, it's, it's, it's exploding the number of people using the system. Um, and that is in also then making some other things take place in terms of how the workplace models are taking place. So where there was a slow lag or people were adopting things such as open office or activity-based uh, spaces, um, all of a sudden, because of this pandemic, some new workplace models have been introduced. Now, all this plays into what's taking place about what is the right solution for a uh, small room. So let me go ahead and share with you uh, the way that I looked at that. Um, well, here's the big statement is that, look, shared spaces are, are going to need to evolve, right? Uh, shared spaces need to take the things that we love, that we enjoy about them, but allow us to feel safe when we return back to work. Um, so here, here are the things I thought were the characteristics of the right solution. This is where I want to talk about some of the things that I found in the MM30. Um, it's an idea of price performance. It's the idea about the IT experience and does it fulfill the needs that the IT department needs, like, like Thomas uh, spoke about some of his concerns and needs earlier. And then more importantly about the end user experience as well too. So with that framework, let me share with you what I set up and uh, let me go ahead and stop sharing for a moment. And I'm gonna go full screen and I'm gonna go ahead and invite you to see what it takes place. Now I'm in my home office right now, right? Um, my experience is as follows. Uh, I do have a credenza set up in the background. I do have a monitor on it. Um, now, the MMX came, comes and it has two primary locations, if you will. The first thing that I unboxed and experienced is what Crestron calls the UC engine. Now, uh, let me share with you some things that I liked about this. Now, the UC engine 
is a bracket system that does have all the components on there, the hidden components, pre-wired um, in a very clean uh, format. I really enjoyed this. Um, the bracket in itself, I actually like too, because it has a couple of great things. One, it has a visa mount. It also has holes for other wall mounting situations, but the low profile of it also as well is kind of nice. So not only does this mean I can do behind the monitor or on the wall, but this could also work well under a desk. And in my scenario, what I would probably do here is I would probably mount it on the backside of my credenza or under my credenza um, so I can access cables if I ever need to as well. Um, the other thing that I noticed about this too that I really liked was the simplicity of the wiring in how I had to set it up. It's pretty straightforward going towards the monitor. I have HDMI and I have a camera cable uh, because of my wiring. I have the camera cable exposed, please uh, excuse that. Even that uh, connection as well too. Um, then it winds up connecting off to the tabletop device as well. The uh, MM, which I'll show you in a moment, 30, uh, does have connected to it ethernet, power over ethernet. Uh, one great thing I really enjoyed too is I did take my system and I did pair it over the network with ethernet. So I was able to simply find it, discover it. So that was a really nice experience. However, the UC bracket does also have the capability now to do direct pairing as well too. So through an additional dongle, if my wiring needs were to have this direct and have uh, an IP address assigned by this particular device to the endpoint, uh, it was capable there. So I like that. I like the flexibility of having it pair over my existing outlets within my house or to direct connect it as well. Uh, which brings me now to the uh, the end user experience, right? And these are some of the great things that I really, really liked here. Um, you, I think you guys talked about the form factor, right? Um, I think it's a beautiful design. The ID, the industrial design, I think works really nice. And I think it's something that would sit nicely on the table. Um, there was some dialogue, some images that showed this being 40% smaller. So it is not taking up um, precious real estate on a desktop, especially as you get into smaller spaces or on a tabletop. Um, now, the directional mics I found to be very, very good in coverage. Uh, for myself, um, I think the specs talk about a 10-foot perimeter of pickup. Um, I was actually able to test it out to about 15, 16 feet when I did my own testing on this as well. It does have four microphones with four touch uh, indicators, allowing me to show uh, indication of whether it's mute or not based upon this. Um, so I found the device in itself to be very inviting. Um, I personally have this right now uh, with two cables in it. It does come with a very thin HDMI cable, I'm sorry, Ethernet cable to allow the PoE and to connect it back to the system. I also have the USB cable connected right now. This is for the direct connect option if I want to share content from a PC. This allows me to connect uh, two cables back to my PC an HDMI, which is gonna be coming out of the UC bracket to my PC, and then a USB cable that comes out of the device to my PC. Uh, this allows for the hidden commands for help do control. Um, of course, uh, we talked about the alignment with um, what people are using, the ease of use. Um, out of the gate, this system is uh, working with and certified with uh, Microsoft Teams and Zoom. Now the Teams interface winds up being pretty powerful. Um, in terms of the ease of use experience, the one touch the dial uh, experience winds up being pretty strong, pretty powerful. I, I really enjoy that. Um, I not only can do that, but if I am not in a call, I have the capability from this device too to share content from my PC. Again, connecting those two cables that I mentioned to you. Um, and as I present that information, it takes over the monitor and, and the full experience winds up being uh, a great in-room experience as well. So, the end user experience around the ease of use, the alignment with the workflow, in this case, Teams that I'm used to is very nice. Uh, the alignment of this in terms of device, it's not intimidating, it's approachable on the desk or on the table is also very nice. Um, and again, the IT experience in terms of my setup and what I found, I, I, I found it to be very uh, pleasurable. Um, now, one of the other great things I wanna talk about here is this. One of the key ideas I talked about was price performance. And there's a couple of things I think that are important to call out about this system. Um, one thing about this system in itself is this is a full MTR solution, Microsoft Teams Room solution. And it's important to talk about that designation right now because uh, Microsoft has also certified a new uh, 
uh, uh, category of products they call collaboration bars. So at the price performance, this system, uh, I believe the press release came out this morning, talks about the single monitors device being about $3,000 MSRP. is actually a great value. It winds up being priced on the lower end of MTRs uh, in terms of what I found in terms of my research of, of these single monitor solutions. Now, because it's though a, a full MTR solution, it does have some feature sets that that other category doesn't have. So for example, um, this system will support direct guest join. So alignment with uh, uh, the WebEx interface, uh, interoperability and the Zoom operability. So I can easily use this particular MTR to join some of these other UC platforms direct with just one click to dial, which is a very nice feature as well too. I already spoke to you also about the fact that this has integrated um, wireless, I'm sorry, wired content ingest. So I can take content from HDMI um, from my laptop, share that within a meeting or also share it within the room, which is a nice thing. Uh, the capability of the system in itself too winds up having dual monitor support, which is something that only MTR has. Now, again, my system is a single monitor system set up, but I believe the team at Crestron is, has on their uh, roadmap, their future plans and dual monitor support as well too. Uh, in terms of video quality, um, this particular system as an MTR supports 1080p, um, which is a higher resolution uh, of, of the categories presented. It does have a really nice camera that does come with it. I was pretty excited about that. Um, this is the Hudley IQ Lite. Now, this is still a very premium camera. I'm really impressed with the field of view, 150 degrees field of view, many are 120, so this has got great coverage that's taking place. Um, so I can see a lot in a small space, which winds up being very nice without any warping, uh, especially think about small tables where you have someone on the sides and you need to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, make sure you have a good coverage of someone close to the, the monitor as well too. Um, and some of the other things I like about this is, you know, the MTR allows for things like the whiteboard and content creation and, and capture as well, too. Um, now, when Nick was first talking to me about this the device, one of the things, I, I was actually on vacation, and um, him and I were talking on the phone. He says, Craig, I'd like you to come on and talk about this. I was camping at the time, and as he was describing to me the device and what they're updating, I started having this image of the campfire experience. That's one of the, the use experiences I really like about this device. It's the idea that you get to lean in with people you're collaborating with across the table. The use cases for this ones that making it work seamlessly if I'm doing an audio-only call uh, to where I'm doing a video call. It's the same box, same interface. I get to wind up talking naturally. Um, it picks up great around the table so I can talk across the table to someone else, but still then also have the far end pick it up as well too. Um, so I, overall, these are, I think this device did a really nice job hitting some of those key categories I wanted to highlight for you. Let me go back and share some information and, and, and highlight that again for you. You know, I, I kind of spoke about this price performance and IT experience ideas. Um, here's, again, I wanted to recap real quick some of the things that I thought were nice delighters for different stakeholders within this product group. So as the price performance, like I said, I highlighted that this is in a full MTR solution. I think it enables a lot of great feature sets that wind up being specific to use cases that you may have as a uh, end customer um, at a very nice price point for that bundle, around $3,000 for the, uh, the initial system coming out. Uh, $750 for the audio only system is what I saw. Um, oh, I forgot to mention also, one of the value adds of Crestron is they've incorporated their room control into this device as well too, right? So they have the page flip capability within the seven inch uh, monitor, allows you then to integrate room control that you may have in there for lights, blinds, or whatever else that's part of the Crestron room control ecosystem as well. Uh, the IT experience, um, again, I love the pre-wired package of the UC bracket and the versatility of mounting it. The low profile, even to bring it under the table is I think a really, uh, uh, clever design, which is very nice when you want to kind of keep the wires to minimum because you can bring the center of the wires, the hubs, to different spaces. Um, and the Hudley camera, great partnership these guys have with this. Even though this is what they call their light camera, do not think that this is not a full-featured camera with high-quality 4K sensor and 150-degree field of view. Um, the end user experience, being aligned right out of the gate with Teams and with um, Zoom works right into your user bases workflows. That's a key idea, right? It's a familiar interface. I know the, the, the 
where how to dial. I know how to join a meeting. I know what to look for. I even know from other feature sets that I'm starting to work with things like proximity join from personal devices to room devices and what have you. Um, that campfire experience, the idea that I had this as a center of the table allows for the diversity of how I'm going to be using that room, whether it be an audio call and I'm talking across the table to someone and still having nice pickup, or whether it's a video call and still even looking at the front of the room but having great audio and microphone pickup. Like I said, in my testing, I was able to have really clear sound for about 15 feet away from the system. Um, so, Nick, I, I, I want to bring this back over to you. Uh, I think these are some of the key highlights that I saw about this. Overall, I think you guys did a fantastic job with this product. Um, again, the key things that I liked were um, uh, it, hit, it hit all some great high, highlights there. Uh, you know, some of the things we've been thinking about and talking about, obviously, is what do you see as just some of the more general trends around return for work? I want to be a little sensitive of time right now, but you're talking to a lot of folks. So are there certain parts and trends that we can share with our audience today as they're, they're listening in, things that you think are, are gems? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I would love to. So let, let's talk about one of the, the top of mind. Everyone's talking about work from home, right? And people are saying, when will we go back from work from home? Um, there was some recent, recent research, uh, Forbes magazine published it from a group called Workstat. It was really interesting and insightful. 60% of the people they interviewed, uh, and there was 750 people that were US based, said they were actually ready to go back to the office at the point in time they felt that it was safe to go back in. And what was really interesting was some of those underlying reasons. Um, I shared these with you and I chuckled at them. One of them is this, 50% of the time, people are actually finding that they're having a hard time dividing between work and home life. People are finding they're working more than at home because it's a never ending constant flow of this too. Frankly, one of the other things too is the camaraderie that takes place as well. People enjoy that. You can be productive, but there's studies that show innovation take place when you're more face-to-face -face with people. And then uh, for myself and probably some other listeners too, 62% um, of these people responded that they're really having a hard time to balance children being at home and working at the same time. I, I, I'm fortunate that not one of my four kids have came knocking on the door during this call. Right. So. <laughs> the other element too is obviously COVID's reshaping the way we think about our spaces. And, and just with one last quick question for you while we have you, are you seeing the nuggets that people can hold on to as you, as you again, scan the, the broader market about how spaces are being redesigned to support this post-COVID world? Yeah, yeah. I can think of two great case studies. Now, these are people as they're starting to introduce what's taking place. Uh, one of them is a, uh, a national coffee chain, if you will, and I was speaking to some people in their real estate office out of Irvine, California. Well, they started doing what people have spoken about. They've gone to a shift base use of their office. And what does that mean? The marketing team comes in on Monday. The sales team is coming in on Tuesday. The, uh, the IT and HR team are coming in on Wednesday. That team takes over the entire office space. They're, they're removing some of the personal space and they're creating more collaboration spaces, too. Even the desktops are, are kind of rotating. They're, they're not hot desking, they're hoteling. The difference being is that Nick comes in and reserves it for the day and that's his space. And then they can do their proper sanitation in between. But they're leveraging more community space within that space as well too. So it's interesting how they're trying to adjust workflows, still getting people together as need be, again, to help kind of bring upon those things that are like innovation and collaboration takes place face-to-face. -face. I think one of, the, one of the side effects of that, Craig, then is you have to have more video conferencing to support the folks that aren't in the office that same time. Yeah. It's, it's and, and it, for devices like this, right? Th that's, that's a second customer that I spoke to. So uh, it's a large pharmaceutical located in the Midwest, and I was speaking to the director of IT, and he was talking about his room deployment situation. And I was trying to understand what they're doing to make the room safe. And a great byproduct came out of that. So they're taking rooms that, much like yours, that seat eight to 10 people, and he's making them socially distance safe. So taking an eight person room, taking it down to four people. But he still has four people that need to meet in person. So what is he doing? He's adding another room that can support four people as well, too. So in virtually, you know, he, he's dealing, uh, in his case, scientists, people that are on site working to, with equipment and devices and then coming together and collaborate. They're in the building and they need to meet. So he's finding he has to double his room space to help accommodate that. In combination with that shift-based idea that's taking place, I think we're going to see uh, some interesting parts of that again when people feel safe to go back into the office. Well, I, I think you're spot on, Craig, and I think we're starting to see these things land. Is 
as it becomes more clear that we don't know the future and we need to plan for flexibility and we need to plan for safety and we need to think about just first teams. Uh, you know, Craig, I, I really appreciate your time today. Uh, I'm very excited to, to, to continue this journey on. In fact, we're, we're going to be joined here virtually by a, a, a friend of Crestron, a friend of the industry, Ilya Bookstein, uh, who leads the team's group at Microsoft. So unfortunately, he wasn't able to join us live today, but I did have a chance to catch up with him last week. Uh, and I'd love to share the quick little interview we did as we talked about the state of the industry, as we talked about this device and the others uh, around it, and what it means to Microsoft and our mutual customers. Ilya, great to see you. Thanks again for joining today's exciting event. Um, you know, we've been longtime partners uh, between Crestron and Microsoft for over a decade. And let's start off there. Give us a little bit of a synopsis of, of you, how you've seen the partnership evolve and what it's become. Sure. Uh, thank you for having me, Nick. I'm really sorry I couldn't join the event live, but it's such a privilege to be able to do this session with you and, uh, and provide some of my thoughts on what, as you said, has been just an amazing partnership. Uh, personally, Randy, Fred, now Ron, John, Ted, you, these are some of my favorite folks to work with. And overall, the two companies, the visions are just so aligned. Mm -hmm. At Microsoft, our goal is to make sure every person can be as productive and as collaborative as possible in every space. And at Crestron, clearly all of you have a complementary vision where every space has the best possible intelligence, audio, video, control to enable that productivity. So the companies have done just fantastic things together uh, in terms of modernizing workplaces. And I couldn't be more excited about what's to come with the products that are gonna be announced here today. And I think that leads us to our, our unveiling of the products. Uh, obviously, uh, you've got a mini that you've been uh, working with right now. I'm sorry, the MM30 that you've been playing with for, for a while. I'm glad you said that instead of me. <laughs> Get that awkwardness out of the way now. What, what's, your, what's your initial thoughts on the device? Just you know, just top level, what, what, what does Ilya think about this thing? Well, yeah, the device, I, I, looking at it over here, it's just beautiful. I'll start with that. I think you guys did a really nice job of the industrial design, the usability. Um, but then translating that into office spaces, mm -hmm. I think it lends itself to a very natural way of, of interaction. If people gather in a group, mm -hmm. today that group might be a little more distant, right? Might have some six feet between people, but you're still gathered, you're talking to each other, and now you're also talking to people who are not in the room. Right. And how do you do that naturally? How do you do that without sort of having to look away and talk to a mic somewhere else. So having a device like the MM uh, just lends itself to that, where it's a device that's small, unobtrusive, simple, easy to use, can be put right in the middle of where people gather, and then can make sure that people who aren't in the room can both hear and be heard and be included in that conversation and dialogue. So it's the kind of device that I think companies are going to be looking to deploy very quickly on their journey to make sure that every space is just equipped for that simple one touch join of a meeting with the confidence of knowing people on the remote side feel great about being included. Yeah, fantastic. I'm glad to hear you say that. And, you know, what we both know is there's a little bit of a surprise to this. This isn't the only product we're launching today. Uh, you know, we've we've used this device to really fill in our portfolio, especially of tabletop devices, right? The Mercury had a lot of success in medium spaces and in larger spaces. Uh, but we've had so much success with the, the product line that we've actually pulled ahead the launch of our next generation products, which we're going to be sharing with everybody right now. So you've gotten a sneak preview of that. Uh, we're refreshing our entire product line starting at the end of August at the same time that many ships will have, uh, you know, sound bars, we'll have Mercury, we'll have, uh, you know, our custom solutions. And so we, we hope to fill in that entire gamut. So uh, what, what's your initial reaction on, on that V2? What does it mean to that partnership? What does it mean to Microsoft to see that reinvestment? Sure. Actually, picking up on that last point, not only could I uh, not be more excited, I also couldn't be more grateful mm -hmm. to Crestron, to Randy, Fred, Ron, John, all of you, uh, for the investment that you've made uh, into the Microsoft Teams ecosystem. So the Flex products have been a fantastic offering, fantastic part of our portfolio. And I know many customers, when they think of 
the highest possible quality AV, with the highest possible integration into their overall smart building infrastructure, they think Crestron. Now with this next generation of Flex products, uh, I think Crestron is not only broadening the applicability of these products to go for every room, you know, from the smallest room to the boardroom, but they're also, you are also responding to today's needs. So the new touchscreen controllers with the antimicrobial screen, uh, I think hits it exactly the kinds of things customers are gonna be thinking about. The different packaging with different camera options, your partnerships such as with Logitech, give customers the kind of choice that they're gonna be thinking about when they think about outfitting every space for Microsoft Teams meetings. So it's a truly, truly exciting time. Uh, we're very grateful for the partnership. And I think more importantly, our joint customers are going to be truly uh, excited and uh, happy to see this as a choice as they are just urgently thinking about what they do to enable uh, every space and every worker for this new hybrid work style. Well, I really appreciate your uh, your sentiments and, and, and it's mutual. We, we appreciate the partnership and it's been very exciting as we've worked together to expand and create new products and new product lines. And uh, I'm sure there's more to come on that front as we both know uh, in the coming months. But for now, it's you know the new MM30, uh, it's the full Flex V2, the next generation of the product line. And uh, Ilya, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. And I, I really look forward to continuing this partnership and continue to expand and, and really serve our customers because that's our job. That's our goal. I couldn't agree more, Nick. Thank you again for the opportunity. It's always a privilege to talk with our friends at Crestron, with your customers. Uh, and for everyone, thank you for the bet on Microsoft Teams. And as you said, we look forward to doing everything possible to jointly enable our customers uh, to get the most from their workplaces and their information workers. It's great to hear from Ilya. I really enjoyed that catching up. And by the way, that conversation, we have a recorded version we'll be posting later this week. There's actually a good 20 minute conversation about the state of the industry, about what's been going on in the post COVID world. Uh, you know, he, he truly is a, a, an amazing guy. It was exciting to catch up. Uh, now I'm joined with uh, Joe Sarazen here, our director of UC strategy, to, to discuss a little more about the big announcement, the secret announcement, right? The next generation of the platforms rolling out now, uh, and really how we've, we've taken this concept of the MM of the mini, that, that new industrial design, that new feature set, expanded it out across the broad lineup of everything we have. So, Joe, can you take us through some of the, uh, the elements of that? Sure. So, what we're looking to do is cover all of the different rooms. Um, and one of the key elements for us to refresh is having a new touch panel uh, for the room system. So, you can see here, uh, what we have is a touch panel that's, of course, more than just a touch panel for a Teams room system. It has the ability to integrate completely with an integrated Crestron system. So, we have environmental controls, video switching, audio distribution, everything you need inside of an integrated space, and it can be accessed seamlessly from within the UI. The other piece for this is that it has a really awesome new industrial design. So we have this in both tabletop, which we're showing off here, and wall mount form factors. Uh, the tabletop form factor, which will come with the flex kits, actually has a couple of great new features that are gonna really complement the room experience. We have built-in occupancy detection and mute indicators when you're in a call. So no more relying on just the other things in the room. You actually get all of that here at the front of the room on the touch panel. And of course, because this is a Crestron device, uh, you have our IT you know, friendly uh, 24-7, 365 days a year support for five years built in with a warranty for every one of these devices sold. Uh, it can connect to Crestron XIO Cloud for remote control. And it gives you that peace of mind that because it's a network appliance and it can do all these things, it's really an, uh, the kind of device that's going to sit neatly in your corporate environment. The other piece that we have um, talking about is that we've also broken out uh, the way we're talking about room systems now. And previously we had talked single and dual display, but now we're really uh, dividing it up between a standard and advanced room system. And that gets us the ability to say we have room systems that are designed to roll out in mass by the features you're looking for just to get video into a room system. Or you can talk about room systems that have the full Crestron experience with things like multiple front of room monitors, intelligent cameras, uh, with people accounting and auto framing, the ability to jump between modes for things like Microsoft Teams and Zoom, 
and also the ability to do bring your own device. Uh, so much like the MX system, which we launched in May, you will have the ability to have a room system for every room size and every type that Prestron sells have the ability to do bring your own device for meetings. So you really will have a true uh, full spectrum of room solutions that can do everything. Uh, the other piece that we're going to be updating is the camera lineup. And this is something that I think uh, is really going to help benefit a lot of our customers because it's going to improve the video quality experience across the board. Uh, so what we've done is we've moved from having a couple of disparate cameras uh, that, you know, different solutions and no real true solution for a large room and a package from Crestron uh, to a standard set of cameras from Hudley for small and medium rooms, the IQ and the IQ Lite, depending on standard or advanced systems. And then for larger rooms, we're actually going to be using a camera from Aver, uh, a larger PTZ camera that's certified by Microsoft and Zoom. So to really round out our lineup and give you that ability to have the right camera for every space. Um, and then speaking of that lineup, uh, what we'll be doing is also revving the kits and the kit numbers so that everything falls cleanly into what type of device do you want? Do you want a tabletop audio device? Do you want a front of room audio device? Or do you want to build a custom integrator kit potentially with partner reference bundles? in small, medium, or large, advanced, and standard. Very straightforward, easy to read table to understand how all of our kits are gonna to come together so that you can pick the right solution for your space and your needs. Uh, and I think that's really one of those things that's really gonna differentiate us is that we have this full package lineup, Nick, that offers everything so customers have a clear choice, but everything is really well laid out and cleanly explained. Yeah, and that freedom of choice has always been a, a core of what we've done and the strategy that you've implemented, right? All the spaces people work in, giving them you know, freedom from the from the desktop all the way up to the boardroom, consistent experience. And the new touchscreen is a huge part of that, right? Absolutely. Just, they, they bring the intelligence in and making sure that when, when end users walk into the space, every time there's some confidence that the system's just going to work, one touch to join, away they go. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So every one of the B and C series kits comes with this touch panel. We just introduced the MM. Mercury Mini device for the smaller rooms for the mm -hmm. M series. We launched the MX, you and I, a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So now we have a complete refresh of this lineup so that we can go forward and give our customers the best possible solutions. Well, you guys have done tremendous work, and thank you for all your support, Joe, throughout this. And uh, thank you for everybody participating today. I think we have a few minutes left. Why don't we bring Thomas back in on this system, and uh, we'll do some quick Q&A and have an opportunity to chat here. So. Uh, Julian, you've been diligently working in the background on, uh, on monitoring questions. If all the presenters can bring video up, we'll just go ahead and go through the, uh, any big ones that are out there. Yeah, so the first question we've got a lot of actually, just what exactly is the screen size of the new MM? And, you know, what's the overall font uh, size of that device? And here it's 40% smaller. But, so know, that was one of the things that we didn't compromise on. So it's not a 40% smaller screen. It's still a seven inch high resolution screen. But you know, with advances in technology and what my design team was able to do here, we've been able to shrink the rest of the device down without compromising the quality. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a 40% reduction in the volume, so it really does have a nice proportionate size for a, a tabletop. So we also saw a lot of uh, these different MMs installed on the table. Is there going to be a tabletop kit available so you can get that clean install? Yes, there will be a tabletop kit available. Um, going along with that, um, is what is exactly, uh, one of the customers saw that MM30TA model, is that a standalone audio version? How, how would that so it is a standalone audio version. That's a Teams audio phone. Uh, it can be used as a conference phone in a public space, uh, or alternately, I think one of the best applications for it is using it in a home office uh, because it works as both your Teams phone, uh, if you're using Teams phone as a platform, which you do here at Crestron, as well as a USB audio device for your computer. So I use this uh, in my home office uh, when I'm taking all of my calls and it has a tremendous audio quality as well as most of the people here at Crestron now that we built this up. Yeah, I mean, some important factors too when you bring technology into somebody's home, right? Like the ability to support it remotely, the ability for our IT staff to actually kind of remote control into it through Excel Cloud. And also I think one of the unique things we're gonna do is, as Craig talked about earlier is, you know, we're in this new world right now and we know it's gonna change. So providing devices at people's homes that can then migrate back to work over time or migrate to new spaces, you know, this is that idea of having a flexible architecture which allows customers to put it really anywhere they need. Absolutely. So uh in there, Craig did mention the price on these is, is three thousand dollars. What exactly do you get for that three thousand dollars? So for three thousand dollars you get a complete video room system. You get your tabletop device. You get the UC Engine device, which is the compute that drives the room system. You get the camera, uh, the Hudley IQ Lite camera specifically is what we were showing with Craig. And you get all the wires and cables that you need to install this. 
which is great. So out of the box, you're not going to have any problems. It shows up. You've got a room system up and running in a matter of, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Exactly. All you do is enter the Teams account credentials that you want to use with your room system, and you're off and on. Great. And don't forget, I, I had a really great experience, too, about the pairing, too. I mean, I, I paired over network between the tabletop and the UC engine, spotless. I mean, there was not a, a, any issue at all. It was very clean install. Yeah, you know, Craig, that's worth pointing out, too. That is a compared to some other folks out there we you know we do and i think thomas you spoke to this a little bit as well the 8021x you know there are there are two schools of thought there are there's, there's a school of thought where people avoid putting things on the corporate network because they feel like they're going to be punished for it and then there's a school of thought that you put everything on the corporate network because that's where you want to manage it if it's not there then it's invisible you know thomas share a little bit about your guys rationale about, the, about making sure the devices are on there yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, fortunately enough for me that uh, we have a, a great telecom team uh, and network evidence that have a, a design concept in mind that when I was able to introduce the first one, uh, we went through a, a series of those conversations. And, and it was, you know, do we set static IP? Do we put them on their own subnet, their own VLAN? How does the configuration work? Who do they need to talk to? Um, and, and also to, in parallel for those of which that have those larger enterprises, you have to integrate your security team. How does the management work behind the scenes? How does the the life cycle work, you know, and giving all that feedback, um, we were able to, you know, and, and, and thanks for, you know, Glenn and some of the Crestron team that jumped right in, in those beginning stages, we got those questions answered, we were able to implement them right out of the box. And so uh, now we have a, a, a really nice design uh, uh, considered that we can actually do that in scale over our global land. Hmm. Um, so that design then supports the ability to adopt these types of devices um, within any, you know, uh, any other facility that we have. Um, and, and to play off the other conversation too, um, we, we want to get into expanding that to, to the home office design as well. And so that's a, 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 also for further conversation during these current times. Great, thank you, Thomas. John, what else? Uh, so again, one of the things Craig mentioned was that, that joining calls on Zoom or uh, WebEx from the Teams panel. That's right. So Microsoft actually recently released an update now uh, for a feature set that they announced uh, last November at Microsoft Ignite. Uh, so WebEx has been included and Zoom will be coming soon uh, to launch those calls, uh, kind of a, a limited feature version, but directly from the touch interface on the device. So if you just need to get into a WebEx call and, and have your camera show up and see other people, it's going to work great for you. Uh, and then if you need anything more advanced than that for WebEx, we have uh, all of our X kits. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, regarding you know, those, those X kits and some of the advanced models that we teach talked mm -hmm. about, when are these products going to be available? Um, so, over the course of this year, we're going to be rolling out all of these kits. So we have the MM kits and uh, the standard kits will be rolling out uh, in the end of August. Yeah, August. And then we'll, over the course of the rest of the year, we'll be rolling out the advanced kits for all the different groups. So, uh, so the MM 30s will be available in August for customers who want to purchase? Correct. And at the end of the day, you're going to choose whether you want that native Teams experience, that native Zoom experience, or that BYOD experience. That's right. And then by the end of the year, all the models will support the dual mode, so both native and BYOD giving the most flexibility. Absolutely. So looking back at the lineup, you know, how exactly does the MN fit in with, with the Mercury? Should that be replacing existing Mercury rooms with MNs, or is this an additional model? No, this is a model meant to really complement it and to have a perfect kind of sized and, and spec device for those smaller spaces, right? Where maybe uh, the physical footprint of the Mercury device wasn't appropriate. Now we have a device with that kind of same quality for the size space uh, that we have in the Mercury device. So it really fills the lineup. And in some ways, the Mercury was overkill for a lot of the spaces that we started talking about today. I mean, you know, Crestron took 30 grand worth of AD gear, and put it in that, you know, $5,000 package, and it was really an unbelievable performer. Um, and, you know, the space it takes up in a small room is disproportionate to what it needs to do. Now you take a Mercury and you put it in a large room like this, which we use quite commonly, especially with the, you know, the optional mic pod, uh, there's a great way to fill in those large spaces. Now with the PTZ camera, that gets you that large room solution. The new M70, the new MX70 are those kits specifically certified large room solutions. And experience here within Crestron has been that that's really our, our go-to for bigger spaces. Absolutely. Uh, and then huddle spaces, uh, offices, work from home, uh, all of that will be complemented with the, the MM. Right. So, you know, one of the other things, not really to the end of our editing series is that new screen that we're talking about, Joe. Um, what what kits does this ship with? Is it a 10 or a seven inch panel? So this is a 10 inch. This is a 10 inch touch panel. This is actually the occupancy sensor uh, in the Teams and Zoom editions. Uh, it's pre-configured so that it'll work with the room system and wake the room system up uh, when you walk into the room. Uh, this is, like I said, it's a 10 inch model. It will ship as part of the B kits. 
and the seek hits. For those of you that are, uh, are still with us, Julian has the toughest job, by the way, scouring through hundreds of comments to try to find consistent questions. So thank you, Julian, you're doing great. So I, I guess, again, going back to that with the original Mercury, just, you know, we have a lot of questions here. You know, what, what are the differences besides, you know, we had mentioned uh, audio pickup, size on the table, you know, how do, again, I know for room sizes, I'm choosing one, but, you know, are there any other key differences I should be aware of between MM and uh, really, the, really, it's meant to fill up that lineup so that when you're talking Teams rooms and Zoom room systems and Teams phones, it is the smaller space solution. I think the most obvious thing you're going to see today is the 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 mini architecture removes some of the stuff that the that the full Mercury had in, right? No air media is in there. Uh, we've really started to th rethink how we're segmenting that based on the standard advanced feature set. Um, and it's important that everybody realizes it's a ground up development. This is not leftover parts from a, a device that was three years old. Uh, this is a net new product that Joe and team created from scratch to really serve this new purpose. Anything else? I feel like we've covered uh, almost all the questions. But well, we're running a few minutes late yeah. anyway, so I, I uh, anything we didn't get to, we'll We'll send out a long follow-up in an FAQ doc. Yeah, absolutely. So look forward to that email we'll be sending out. We'll have a, a recording. We'll provide the additional information uh, as well as the case study, uh, Q&A. Uh, and certainly the most important thing that we always remind you is Andrew Gross has a team of, of professionals that are out there around the globe waiting to help you. Um, so just as Thomas and, and Rich Products has gone through that, that cycle of, of implementing Flex and, and mentions team members like Glenn, we really want our team to feel like an extension of your organization. You know, we're here to help you take that journey. We're here to help you as you're radically trying to change the video conferencing, uh, as Craig talked about in this post COVID world. So thank you so much for your attention today. Thank you to all the presenters, Thomas, Craig, Andrew, Joe, uh, Julian for working behind the scenes. Uh, thank you so much and everybody have a great day.